Hi everybody, let's have a look at some harder indices problems. Starting with question A here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the brackets. So remember with the one there, with the two there, there's an imaginary little one there, it's an index. So I multiply because I've got four and oops, sorry, also with the B there, it's an imaginary little one. So what I'm going to do here, because I've got four outside the bracket, I'm going to multiply all the indices by four. So I get two to the power of four. A to the power of 12, B to the power of 4. So I've multiplied 1 by 4, 3 by 4, and 1 by 4. Multiply by, we'll write out the second expression. Now what I might do at this stage is make 2 to the power of 4 into a number. Now remember, it's not 8, it's not 2 times 4, it's 2 to the power of 4, so it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we get 16, a squared, b to the power of 4, multiplied by 4, a to the power of 3, b to the power of 3. All right, now we remember we take the numbers and the indices separately here. So as far as numbers are concerned, I've got 16 multiplied by 4. So it's going to be 64. A to the power of 12 multiplied by A to the power of 3. We add the indices A to the power of 15. B to the power of 4 times B to the power of 3. We add the indices B to the power of 7. And there's the final answer to that problem. There we go. Next question. Once again, remove brackets is the first objective here. So we've got 7xy cubed, so just keep that as is, over, remember, once again, there's a 3 to the power of 1 there. So we get 3 to the power of 1 times 2 is 2. x to the power of 3 times 2 is 6. y to the power of 2 times 2 is 4. And we've got brackets involved. We multiply the indices. Tidy up the denominator is the bottom part of the fraction. 3 squared is 9, 3 times 3, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4. All right, so moving up here, moving across to here maybe, we've got 7 and 9. Now, uh, they can't be cancelled, so they remain where they are, 7 and 9. There's no number that divides into both 9 and 7. 7 is a prime number. With the x's, we've got x to the power of 1 there and x to the power of 6. Now, when we subtract, uh, sorry, when we divide with indices, we subtract. So if we went 1 minus 6, we'd actually get x to the power of negative 5. x to the power of negative 5, to make that positive, we'd place that on the bottom of the fraction. And what some people do with these is they go, okay, well, the biggest number is 6, the smallest number is 1, 6 minus 1 is 5. And because the bigger index is on the bottom of the fraction, that's where the answer will be. That's fine. But I'll keep talking about negative indices as well. So with the y's, we've got 3 minus 4, which is y to the power of negative 1. Okay? To make that positive, it's got to go on the bottom. So it's going to be y to the power of 1 or just y. So my answer is 7 over 9, x to the power of 5, y. Third example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to treat it like two multiplication sums to start with. I'm going to times the top on the numerator position, the top two expressions here, and then I'm going to times the bottom two expressions. So let's do the top of the fraction first. So we're going to get 3 times 2 is 6. m to the power of, we've got 5 and 7. It's going to be m to the power of 12. Then I've got n to the power of 1 here times n to the power of 4, that's going to be n to the power of 5. So that's the top of the fraction dealt with. On the bottom, I've just got 7. Then I've got m to the power of 3 times m to the power of 1. That's going to be m to the power of 4. Then n to the power of 3 times n to the power of 2 is n to the power of 5. And what we get here, because we've got n to the power of 5 on 
top and the bottom, they can cancel out. As far as the numbers are concerned, I've got six and seven. Once again, there's no common factor of six and seven, so I can't cancel. Then I've got m to the power of 12 divided by m to the power of four. 12 minus four is eight. So I've got m to the power of eight on top like that. So there's the answer to that third example. So there's some examples of some more difficult uh, indices problems. Enjoy.